Hey! Today we are here near Kaliningrad on the shores of the Baltic Sea to find out what happens if an opponent force is actually closing onto the Russian shores. Sir, are you sure this is Kaliningrad? Yes, Otis, I'm 100% positive. This is Kaliningrad. So if you are interested in military things, you have probably seen a map like this. All these circles represent the Russian air and naval defenses that should prohibit the Western forces to access the mainland Russia should a generalized conflict happen. These are called A2 AD bubbles in many Western military sources. Point is, there seems to be no trace of this concept in Russian military literature. Because apparently the term was coined with reference to the Chinese and then it was extended to the Russians, but with little justification to be honest. But this raises an issue. The main weapon that the Russians use for coastal defense Sir, sir, this is a German V1, sir. ...that are launched from the shores, like the one behind me. The Russian coastal defenses are based on anti-ship missiles organized in batteries around a radar and some other service and communication vehicles. The main weapon is the BAL system that fires the KH-35 missiles. They are organized in batteries of four launchers and every launcher has eight missiles. About 112 launchers have been acquired and they have been distributed in the Baltics, in the Black Sea and in the East. The weapon is in the same class as the American Harpoon, albeit with a slightly longer range. The batteries can use their own radar with over the horizon capabilities to acquire the target and fire, or they can be provided a firing solution from the naval aviation via data link. The other system in use is the Bastion P, which is actually more capable than the BAL. In fact, it fires the P-800 Onyx supersonic anti-ship missile. The weapon has different flight profiles that can be used in different ways. It has a high altitude, high speed, nearly hypersonic attack profile, or a sea skimming high supersonic attack profile. The range is estimated to be around 300 kilometers, but these obviously vary heavily with the attack profile. Potentially, the missile can also hit land targets, albeit this probably seems to be wasted for that. Each launcher has two missiles ready for fire, with four missiles available for reload. Uh, they are organized in batteries of four around the radar and the usual uh, group of service vehicles. Like the BAL, they can designate the target themselves, or they can receive the firing solution from the naval aviation assets through a data link. Among the Western analysts, there is a debate about the over-the-horizon capability of the Russian coastal defenses radars. However, Russian designers claim that their OTH technology can spot and, crucially, classify a target well enough to provide an autonomous firing solution at long range. Well, we don't have a certain answer, but some analysts actually notice that it doesn't really make sense to have a long-range weapon if you don't have a kill chain capable of actually using the whole range of the weapon. Well, unless the dependency from the naval aviation is given for granted and the responsibility of long-range designation is left to the aircraft. But to do this, for Russia, there is a problem. We have been given an exceptional permission to shortly film inside one of the Russian Coastal Defense Command Center. Here we are, you are getting in, coming in. Here we are. Uh, Otis, pay attention, the floor is wet. The sensor indicates it is not water, sir.
Russian naval aviation, albeit still respectable, is actually the shadow of what it used to be in Soviet times. While some of its material is actually modern and effective, there are several problems. Russian long-range aviation took the 222M3 from the naval aviation in 2011 and they actually brought the long-range naval attack with them. The 222s still do naval activity, but under the long-range aviation, not under the naval aviation. But 63 Tupolev 22M3 are actually available, but only 40 are estimated to be operational at any given time. Albeit, even in small numbers, they are a very dangerous opponent because of the range and the speed and the overall effectiveness of their KH-32 missiles. What happened with the Tupolev 22 is not unique. This pattern is not unique. While there are naval aviation units, the Russian Air Force is also training for naval operations and it is supposed to be part of it. The Russians in this respect are a bit particular because, for example, the carrier units with the MiG-29 carrier variants and the Suhoi-33 are actual naval units, but there are also naval units with the MiG-31 and the Suhoi-35. However, the specialized platforms like the maritime reconnaissance aircraft, they do belong to naval aviation anyway. And one of the main Russian anti-ship platforms is the Suhoi 34 that you see behind me. This is ridiculous. So currently for maritime attack operations, the Russians rely on the Su-34 bomber on the Tupolev 24M3 tactical bomber and the Suhoi 30SM multi-role heavy fighter. In particular, the Suhoi 34s are considered dangerous opponents because they have been spotted increasingly practicing naval attack operation with the KH-31 and the KH-35 missiles. Also, an increasing naval activity has been noticed in the recent years by the Suhoi 30 SM, which perform multi-role missions in naval environments. So the Russian Air Force is also becoming a major player when it comes to maritime operations. However, the main limitation of the Russian Navy is the limited availability of Ilyushin 38 and Tupolev 142. These are both long-range maritime patrol aircraft. If these assets are not available in sufficient numbers in a generalized conflict or uh, being relatively vulnerable, uh, they suffer quite a lot of losses, then the defense of the Russian approaches has a problem. In fact, Without this platform, the range at which the targets could be designated is 300, 400, 500 kilometers and no more. So overall, the reach of the Russian defenses is potentially quite limited. these elements enough to create A to AD bubbles around key points on the Russian coastline? Well, technically yes, albeit as we have seen, the range could be actually limited, but this is not the priority of the Russian planners. Russian naval doctrine today is defensive in nature. In fact, since the end of the Cold War, blocking the reinforcements uh, through going through the Atlantic is no longer a relevant mission. In case of an all-out conflict, they might still try, but the Russian submarine fleet today is much, much smaller, bait much more modern than uh, the Soviet fleet used to be, and it still has the crucial task of protecting the ballistic missile launchers under the polar ice and in the Arctic Sea. The modern Russian naval doctrine is a layer defense of the Russian approaches. In fact, Russia is a continental power uh, and maritime traffic, albeit more important than it used to be, is still not crucial to the survival of the Russian economy. And mind, this may change with the opening of the Arctic. 
The Russian Navy main mission is to avoid the use of the sea to project power over the Russian mainland. To do so, Russia retains some long-range bombers and long-range missiles because basically the Russian idea of defense is making the opponent incapable of offense. No, Russian planners do not expect to sit down behind the fences trying to absorb anything that is coming at them. However, as we have already seen, the effectiveness of these assets depends from the capability of establishing a long-range kill chain, which in turn depends on the patrol and reconnaissance capability that may be on a shaky foundation. Even space-based reconnaissance capabilities that in Soviet times uh, used to be relatively well developed uh, today are considered to be sketchy. However, despite these limitations, the Russian idea is that submarines and then ships and naval aviation and then coastal defenses are expected to progressively wear down the Western coalition naval assets to the point they are not going to be a meaningful threat anymore. As we have seen in the previous video about air defenses, this is pretty much the opposite than a defensive doctrine based on bubbles. And anyway, the Western uh, naval assets and the carriers will be probably always operating quite far from the coastal defenses. So the whole idea of having a bubble and anti-ship bubble is probably doesn't make sense in the first place. However, the shore-based defenses are a useful last line of defense and can be particularly effective in restricted waters like the Baltics or the Black Sea. But they are definitely not the cornerstone of the Russian naval strategy. And we have covered Russian capabilities, Russian strategies and Russian assets in various other videos on this channel and they are going to appear beside me. Thank you very much for watching this video and see you there.